Hello YouTube, welcome to a new episode of Synth News, the format which summarized the Synth News from the past week. Sorry for no upload last weekend, but I was sick and my computer had some serious problems. Nonetheless, let's start with the Synth News of the last week. We begin this week with the Tuesday, because Monday was very calm and I didn't find any must-see news. On Tuesday I found an interesting posting on Facebook where a musician transformed the Nord Micro Modular in a Micro Modular Eurorack module. This module is very clever designed and comes only with some macro knobs, which are CV controllable. That would be a great module because you can store crazy modular patches from the Nord Modular inside the module and you can recall them inside a real Eurorack system. Actually it's a DIY project from a user from Facebook. But come on Nord, this could be a great new synth product for your lineup. Also on Tuesday I found a new video from the Japanese company Roland, where you get some insights in the official Roland Museum. They used a 360 degrees camera to capture all their release products so far. And I guarantee you find a lot of winter synths in this video. On Wednesday it was a good day for software synthesizers. Living memory software released Layer a multi-temporal synthesizer for iPhone and iPad. Leia is a massive iOS synthesizer with the possibility to layer multiple instances together and to create big sounds. With an iPad Pro you can even use up to 256 voices. And what is great, you can define the key range. So you can map one sound to a lower key range and another one to a higher range. I played a bit with Leia and it sounds powerful but you need a bit more time than usual to understand all the features. I will release in near future some videos about the synth. Also on the Software Wednesday, Team Exile, best known as Native Instrument Artist, released his first commercial Reactor 6 ensemble, Synthesizer Slow, a voice swarm synthesizer. This new instrument allows to morph between complex sound architectures and to create some very unique sounds. As usual for the projects of Team Exile, this synth is also designed to, to create very experimental sounds. If you are a regular user of Reactor 6, it's maybe something for you. On Thursday, a hurricane of likes, dislikes, comments and more arrived to my Synth Anatomy Facebook page. This happens because Uli Beringer released the complete details of the upcoming Beringer D synthesizer, an authentic Minimoog synthesizer clone for a very affordable price of $400. I can understand all the users who say Beringer can only copy existing synthesizers, I can't release some new and original instruments. This is maybe right, but for me personally it's more an interesting situation how the synth market will react to this news. Will this trigger a new wave of cheap analog synthesizers or will the market still the same? If Behringer will achieve a $400 Minimo clone with an acceptable analog sound, I'm pretty sure that they will sell this device like hotcakes. And Korg and all other competitors must see how they can combat this attack by Behringer. I can't say anything about the sounds, because the device is still only a device on the paper and not yet developed, or even a prototype is not yet built. I'm really looking forward how this will sound. Also on Thursday, Eplex 7 DSP announced a new Windows VSD only synthesizer product. Alexis is a new kind of vocoding synthesizer which allows to create very strange and experimental vocoder sounds. This plugin contains two re oscillators with many unique waveforms and it's based on the kind of new vocoder resynthesis technology. Very cool product, but unfortunately, this product is only available for Windows users. If you search something new and not yet available, then check out Alexis from Eplex 7 dsp Thanks God, it's Friday and I found something very stylish in a Facebook synthesizer group. Equals Design, a design company released some pictures of a very special case for the teenage engineering pocket operators written, sub and factory. There are already official cases available, but what is here unique, the, this new case transformed the three pocket operators in one instrument. Really cool design, but I can't say if this is only a design study or maybe an upcoming product. Please be the second, because it looks so cool. Also on the same day, the Barcelona based company Endorphins announced that the complete shuttle system modular synthesizer is now available to purchase. The shuttle system contains the further generator, a dual triangle core VCO, with a wave shaper, the Grand Terminal 
a dual voltage controlled gate with 8 resonant filter modes and different types of envelopes. On top it contains the cabin pressure audio effects processor with many different effects. Further you have the cockpit, a 4 stereo channel mixer with sidechain ducking and the possibility to use your iPad as external instrument and effect unit beside your modular synth. Then you have the gateway, an utility module with a dual 1 plus 1 utility mixer, an auto tuner with scales and much more. And on the complete right side you have the awesome shuttle control Eurorack module with a very complex MIDI to CV interface with a lot of very interesting features. The best feature is that you can connect your iPad to it and use it as MIDI sequencer or route virtual control voltages to your system from the iPad. The complete system costs around 2300 euro and it's a big synthesis playground. It can produce very normal but also very experimental sounds which you can find only here. Unfortunately I didn't find any interesting other news on Saturday or today. So we are already in the closing of this new episode of Synth News. For closing this Synth News week I want to share with you one Synth Music tip. This week I want to recommend you the synthesizer musician Panabright. He is a musician from US who really keeps alive this kind of Synth Noodle music. Really recommend his latest album and especially the Pavion album from 2014 with the song Regent. As usual I will put all the news links in the video description. Please write in the comments below what do you think about the Behringer Descent? Do you think it's okay to clone a Minimoog or not? I will be happy to read your opinion. I hope you enjoy this new episode of Synth News. If you like this video please leave a positive thumb and a subscription for more future videos. Many thanks for watching and for your continuous support. I hope to see you again in one of my next videos. Bye!